Life is precious and you need to grab all the happiness you can every day and make the most of it. Life's also fragile and uncertain and that's the reason why today we are going to focus on the most critical aspect of your financial well-being, life insurance. This decision or this investment is the most valuable gift you can give to those who depend on you for their economic needs and those who are most precious to you your spouse your kids your parents welcome everyone with my expert panel today jain dua md and ceo of billa sun life insurance and harsh rungta ceo of apnapaisa.com i'm going to thrash out every aspect of life insurance and hopefully answer every question on your mind jain and harsh thanks very much for joining me i'm going to first come to you jain and ask you life insurance penetration which is as a percentage to gdp you judge it is still very low it's done extremely well increased from as low as 1.2% to 5% plus over the 10 years but it's still nothing why is that is it lack of awareness is it just that the economic security blanket of joint family friends fa- friends and family so close in india i think uh, nisha two ways to look at it i think one is of course if you look at it the penetration from a percentage of gdp it's made a remarkable progress and i think oh. that's when only when the entire sector was opened up and did you really got penetration going but i think we've only touched the you know we've only scratched the surface mm-hmm. and uh, going forward i think there has got to be a lot of more work done where financial inclusion and life insurance have to actually work in tandem together for it to really go forward okay which would really mean that you will have to really now get into what we call as the under penetrated areas so if mm-hmm. i would take a cut i would say the metro and the semi metro penetrations are far superior mm-hmm. but now the next journey to the other parts of the country has to be really taken place and 10 years in a life insurance sector is actually a very small time frame mm-hmm. you know it's a, it's a, it's a industry for 100 years or 150 years when you actually reach the end point and so i think uh, the journey is well begun and i think it's just going to move it forward over there my second concern on this question really happens is that it's not an issue of the actual absolute number right uh, i think the awareness of life insurance in the country has definitely gone up mm mm-hmm. Uh, I would do, agree with that Harsh. You know, Every question <coughs> which comes on let's talk money I think has an insur- life insurance component to it. However the conversion from that awareness to a physical buy mm-hmm. there is a large gap. Okay. And that's what I think the life insurance and the regulator needs to work to convert. Why is there that gap? I think one is basically also the way the geography is of this country it's a large country mm-hmm. large geography I think we need to find delivery mechanism to go into larger parts of the country that has to be taken care of the second is also the country India is an evolving country a very young country today I mean, let's look at the median age people mm-hmm. will argue between 25 to 27 right. but that's where it is today now I think the entire discernible customer base for the country is growing up So earlier you were very heavily reliant on some elderly advice in your family to do it. Mm-hmm. People are now moving towards a lot more of financial planning advice. Right. Also they're becoming more aware of the availability of products in the net and the general net culture which is coming, you know. So I think all that will really take it forward to going over there. Now what really happens is when you start getting into your own research it's a positive and a negative mm. the positive is that you become more discernible so you ask a lot more right question right the negative is sometimes you don't take the right decisions because <laughs> you haven't taken the right financial advice <laughs> okay that's a much broader discussion but harsh uh, there is there are two indias and i think that's what's coming out from jain sansar so there is one india which is adapting to technology embracing life insurance uh, as a critical part of their financial planning and then there's this other india which we have to work on much harder but within this uh, india which is actually embracing life insurance i think there are still questions and we keep getting those questions how much of life insurance is enough i know there are thumb rules and there is this whole human life value formula which one uses but i think that's one important question we should really address at the start of the show so uh, i think quickly to just quickly add on to uh, what jain says i mean absolutely i think the life insurance industry as a whole hmm. has done a great job mm-hmm. in terms of uh, increasing the awareness mm-hmm. about life insurance in the last 10 years and 10 years is a short time right. in the life insurance i i think those two facts are completely uh, granted in terms of how much life insurance a person needs hmm. i think it's to me it's extremely simple i mean is no it? jargon is is simply this that i need so much life insurance hmm. that will ensure hmm. right 
that my family continues to if i die and hmm. let's not talk of these if one something untoward happens if i die i know let's okay, face it let's face it everybody right. of us is going to die hmm. right if i die how is my can my family continue with the lifestyle right and if my current income is able to support some goals in the future hmm. can those goals still be achieved right right if i am not around if i die in between hmm. i think i need enough life insurance to make sure that these two things happen mm -hmm. the trick is in the calculation right mm. but in principle this is very simple i i need enough life insurance so that the family does not miss me economically hopefully they will miss me socially mm. but at least they should not miss <laughs> you know, me economically it's not that easy to actually come to that conclusion because i think for a we just are not aware of what our future requirements will be these are things that you need to sit down with your financial planner absolutely, and absolutely. actually uh, you know calculate that to thumb rule like 10 to 12 times your income it it ranges i mean there are financial planners who say seven times i think most of the times financial planners look at the paying capacity of a person in terms of what he can pay as a premium and then suggest they say okay seven is the bare minimum you should start with but 12 times of your income is something you should definitely work towards okay actually there are two parts you know so th there are two ranges one somebody says five to six times and there's another range which says 10 to 12 times mm -hmm. and one is of course everybody looks at and i think in this entire argument something which gets missed out is the the rupee value or the money value in time right and i think that needs to start getting incorporated in actually calculating this hmm. if you look at the last 20 years and i when i'm giving you very approximate figures the average inflation has been about close to 8% absolutely now so if i would take a little bit of an example of today a lakh will actually been mean drop down to say what 40000 mhm mm mhm mm now are we building those scenarios so one is a maintenance of lifestyle is what you're talking about which means a lifestyle with including only including inflation so including you inflation. you need to get inflation built into it and that's why the ranges come from 5 to 6 to 10 to 12 hmm. where some people build some of these factors into it and right. then come out with a 10 to 12 ratio hmm. some of them don't build those factors into it and then come out as 5 to 6 okay however there is one question which gets completely missed out uh-huh and you know let being very pragmatic that you will die one day hmm. some of us will have a death which will be sudden but some of us will die by raising our expenditure levels to an extreme high absolutely and then leave it for our families to cover it up hmm. Hmm. i think you need to pick up three or four critical factors mm -hmm. what is the present value of money what is it unforeseen which is there going to happen assuming you might have a you know an education of a child you might have a marriage in the family you might have you know you might have to look at some illness factors there mm -hmm. you need to book each one of them together and then see where do you want your family to be mm. and really get down to it and the moment you bring the inflation factor into it i think the 10 to 12 also falls short mm. 10 to 12 we'll, we'll we'll come back i think uh, actually, go ahead Harsh. actually yeah. manisha the key is actually doing so thumb rules are thumb rules they work in some cases they don't hmm. i mean there will be and today with the younger population being exposed to media you have this 24 year olds coming 25 year olds coming earning good and hmm. asking how much life insurance do i need hmm. now they have no dependents their parents are not dependent on them they actually don't need life insurance hmm. so th th in that the thumb rule is zero literally right, right. they don't need it today when they get married and if their wife is dependent even she may not be dependent in which case they may never need life insurance right. if they don't have children. children so my point is this is something thumb rules are good mm. you can follow whichever one but the key is better you go for financial advice mm. so that you don't end up being underinsured right or paying too much money for insurance that you don't need don't need so both there is an underinsurance danger and there is a too much insurance danger as well i think we face as a nation right now the under insurance problem which is far more evident uh, we've got a caller on air we've got lots more to discuss but we'll get generic but i think the show also has to go out and help people take the right decisions suman puli 29 years of age joins us from chennai suman thanks very much what's your life insurance question uh, my question is uh, can you please suggest me uh, my uh, for me best children plan for my daughter's uh, secure future My okay. daughter is about two years of age, right. and whatever you suggest, I'll go with that. I wish uh, to give best secure future for my kid. Okay. Like I'm uh, right now, I'm about uh, like planning to pay up to two thousand rupees per month. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can please suggest me like uh, best plans, uh, best plan for my kid. 
Uh, okay. I came across a few of them, like uh, IC, ICICI Prudential is providing a smart kit, uh, you, a new unit link plan, right. and Birla Sun Life uh, Children Dream Plan, Egon Relicare is providing some plans, ACFC, SLIC, Young Star Super, and Kotak Head Start, Head Start Future. Uh, All right. Yeah, so, uh, Suman, have you invested in equities ever or equity mutual funds? Uh, no, I am a uh, like uh, it's my uh, I'm very new to this field, so I don't have much idea. That's why I need some expert opinion. All right, young father wants to secure his daughter, so he's looking at insuring her against obviously his life, anything happen yeah. happening to him, and also wants that money to grow. He's named out a lot of uh, plans. I'm not going to ask Jen to get into it because he shouldn't be commenting on either his product or his rival products. But hush, you take that question. Uh, but Suman, what do you uh, what do you really expect from this fund? This fund would go into what kind of asset class? All the five uh, plans that you have discussed are all uh, ULIPs, which means you will have to decide which fund it will go into. So, which fund are you planning? Are you planning to put it into an equity fund, into a debt fund? into a balanced fund. What are you planning, Sumit? Like, uh, I, I, as I said, I am a complete novice in the field. I just right. want a secure future for my kids. So, whatever you suggest, uh, what according to you would be best for my daughter. Okay. okay. Uh, so, I think, uh, Sumit, the key issue is that whether you choose a ULIP plan or whether you choose to invest uh, somewhere else, I think the first bigger thing that you should plan on is having adequate life insurance. Okay. And that need not necessarily be a mixed uh, investment com, uh, insurance. Uh, if you don't have adequate life insurance, if, if you die, your family uh, gets affected, your child will obviously also get affected, whatever plans that you might have. So, the first thing that you must ensure is that you should have adequate uh, term insurance. And I think uh, life insurance and we at Apna Paisa, we recommend a term very strongly. You can go online and find term plans that are extremely cheap. Please, before you look at investment, please make sure that you have adequate life insurance. Please also make sure that you have adequate uh, health or hospitalization expenses insurance because an event like that can actually throw your entire plan out of gear. Only once you have these two plans in place, should you start looking at investments. You can't look at investments before you uh, complete your uh, insurance requirements. As far as investments go, you can decide. You, uh, as far as your daughter's future is concerned, she's two years old, and I think you're looking at a fairly long time frame. You're looking at uh, at least minimum 10 years. I think you're talking 15, 20 years. You can look at any asset class that suits you. I would advise that any asset class that you choose, there should be big element of equity in it. So, uh, if you choose ULIP, <coughs> great. Choose the growth option. Okay. We don't recommend ULIPs. Simply any ULIP. Nothing to do with which company is offering it. Uh, simply because I think uh, uh, you don't have the option of switching fund managers if if the fund doesn't perform up to your expectations. Uh, you can choose uh, equity mutual funds, you can choose balanced funds or if your risk profile is low, you can also choose public provident fund which is currently giving an excellent uh, post-tax return. So depending on what you want, you can choose. I would suggest that you take proper financial advice not just about your uh, child's future because that is one element of your overall plan. Get your entire plan into place so that you know exactly what you have to do to meet all your goals. All right, so just to sum it up, all the products that you've sent us are actually unit linked insurance plans, ULIPS. Of course, they have a name like a child plan. So you obviously think that that's the best product to secure your daughter's future that may not be necessarily true so a clean term insurance plan to actually ensure your life and protect your daughter and your wife is extremely important kotak and aviva these are two term plans which are quite reasonable go for them and if you still have money after you've paid the premiums for these term insurance covers you could actually look at a mutual fund an equity fund investment. The reason why we say we do not like combining insurance and investments is because it actually fails to do two things. It either doesn't give you adequate insurance and if it, you need adequate insurance, you have to shell out a huge premium or the investments under that ULIP plan may not give you the optimum returns, which an equity plan or a balanced plan, if you want to be a slightly safe, a balanced plan will give you both a little bit of debt and equity will do. 
Having said that, if you still want to choose one of these, I think stick to the equity side or choose a fund which has more equity in it. You will have options in each of these plans to choose your debt equity combination. A lot more to discuss, a lot more questions to take. We'll come back. You're watching the Life Insurance Special of Let's Talk Money. You're watching the Let's Talk Money Life Insurance Special. There are several things we've discussed so far. One, that it's extremely important that you take inflation into consideration, calculate your life expenses extremely well, and then sit down with a financial planner before you come to the decision of what is the right amount of life insurance cover for you. I think that is a critical takeaway. But Harsh, we also have an audience which is very young. And in earlier Let's Talk Money, you've all always said that one is right amount of insurance. And for people, like we just had uh, callers, who are under 35, there are accident and there are other covers which are even more important, right? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, my son is 25 years old and he's working. Now, since nobody is dependent on him, he doesn't need life insurance, but he needs disability insurance. Mm -hmm. Should a critical illness strike, I mean, uh, uh, God forbid, a stroke or an uh, organ failure, and we are seeing that it is happening at younger and younger ages now, mm -hmm. you need enough insurance to make sure that you get a lump sum that will help you get an income, an alternative income. Similarly is accidental disability. So I think these two are extremely important, especially for, uh, in fact for anybody, but mm. especially for younger people. There are issues and to the point which I would say that why does the 24, 25, you know, fine, he needs the accident, he needs the disability covers, absolutely well said. But there's also an adage which says you need to start young in life insurance. Mm. And that's where the benefit of that really happens for you. And over a period of time, uh, you know, you look at the financial returns or the benchmark returns, the number of funds which beat the benchmark in LI as an industry, and you will find a lot of funds are very well managed and performing. Mm -hmm. So I think this debate is something which will continue. Mm -hmm. It is something which will be talked about. But from a perspective, the way we look at it from a life insurance industry, we say that we have actually got the complete life cycle product availability. Right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> except that we think that we would just want the investor to make, maximize his returns. So, so the thing that, that makes me uncomfortable about yeah. a ULIP is that you're locked in with the insurance company. See, in a mutual yeah. fund, I may decide my asset allocation is to equity, so but to if my, the out. fund manager is not performing, okay, I, I, or if my fund manager shifts the fund mm. house, I can go shift my money along with him if that's what I want, Absolutely. right? Without any tax implications. Now, that's not possible in a ULIP. I, and I think that makes me uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. That, All right, let's uh, get in Chaitanya Sharma. He's waiting on the line for some time now, 29 years of age, Bangalore. And that's what I'm saying, that here you see both our callers, Suman Chaitanya, under 30. Chaitanya, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah, Maisha, thanks. Uh, thanks for calling. Uh, I have a few doubts related to term policy. Uh, mm -hmm. Already, I'm using HDFC term policy from the last two years. Right. Uh, around 13 lakhs of some issues. Okay. So now I feel it is not adequate, and I want to uh, increase the sum issue from 13 lakhs to one crore. Mm -hmm. So my first question is like uh, the existing term policy. Can I top up it to the from 13 to one crore? Mm -hmm. And my second question is related like uh, if not, uh, mm -hmm. please uh, tell me any uh, good term policy. And my All third right. question related to term policy is, uh, there are so many term policies, few says, the number of maximum terms are 25, few says 30, few says 35. Mm -hmm. So on what basis should we need to take, uh, should we need to go for uh, how many terms, the number of terms? Is it really need to go for a riders for a term policy or not? He's asked all the questions, Hush, to start. <laughs> so, so I think uh, in terms of uh, fresh term policy, I think he's taken the policy in the old time, premiums would be high. Hmm. One of the advantages of taking hmm. a term, I mean the insurance industry obviously may not agree, Jayanth clearly hmm. will not agree, but one of the advantages of taking term is that if my prices drop, I can take a new, if and my health has remained the same, yeah. right? I can take a new term policy at a cheaper rate so and let my old policy lapse, yes. right? Which is what I would advise Chaitanya to do, please hmm. go online. Hmm. Take this policy, please disclose everything, huh. everything, Contra Absolutely. insurance is a contract of utmost good faith. If you hmm. smoke, disclose you smoke, if hmm. you use tobacco, disclose, if you are diabetic, disclose. Hmm. There is no point in getting a piece of paper right. if at the time of claim you are not going to get the money. So right. point is please disclose, please take it online, 
you get it cheap. I mean, there are recommendations mm -hmm. there. Typically, Aviva Met, uh, or uh, Kotak, uh, etc. Or go with a brand that you want. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's as far as the term is concerned. Mm -hmm. Please do not let your existing policy lapse without getting the Absolutely. new policy in hand. Please make sure you have something in hand right. before you let let the old policy lapse. As far as riders are concerned, unfortunately in India, because of the regulations, mm -hmm. the amount that you can get on the riders is very, very small. Mm. So whether it is an accidental disability, whether it is critical illness disability, you might be able to get much better deals mm. by taking them as standalone policies mm. from the general insurance companies. Okay, very interesting point. Two, uh, one that you can actually as term insurance market com becomes more competitive and the premiums for term cover come down you can switch out very easily the other thing which he said is that the riders right now uh, do not club them in with your life insurance policy because Take the separately. values you are able to get are, are very, very low small. i would only add one more point to what harsh was saying wherever whichever term you buy hmm. while you must disclose because that's the paramount importance hmm. the whole industry works on you know your disclosure but please look at the claim experience hmm. of the company you go for <laughs> And that's a critical one. Is it easy to uh, find the claim settlement oh, experience oops. of a company? Uh, absolutely. How? How will you do that, Jay? You just can just go to the regulator website and it's available. Mm -hmm. So it's as disclosed as that. It's available on it's the available. IRDA's website. There are sites like Apna Paisa and mm -hmm. there are other sites yeah. on which so you, you can go be able to get the claims experience. A small bit of, I, I would just put a small bit of caution on the claims experience. Now, typically, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at anywhere in the world, as companies start, Initially, the volumes are low, so the denominator is low. Hmm. Okay, so on the death claim percentage, right? Hmm. Initially, it will always be high for hmm. all new insurance companies. As volumes increase, it should normalize. Right. So you should be worried if the claim experience of the company that you are choosing, if that company is large and has been large for the last six, seven, eight years, hmm. and still the claim percentage is high, then you should be worried. Worried about. But it. if it's a new company which has really come into a big time play only in the last two three years then i would not worry so much about the claims experience as long as i disclose everything up front absolutely all right there you go chaitanya you should be switching out of your policies and increasing your term cover to one crore that's some that's a decision which is great go online find the best term cover for you at the most reasonable premium the other thing in terms of the extra riders you can club it with your life insurance but if you are willing to pay the premium go out and get an extra policy for accident and disability cover that would give you a much better coverage well this topic is uh, huge and we could keep discussing it but we've run out of time harsh and jain thanks very much for joining me today i'll be back again next week to take many more of your questions meanwhile if you want to reach out to us with your questions or any of your money life uh, queries you can get in touch with us at uh, money at ndtv.com or call us at the numbers flashing on your screen goodbye thanks very much for joining me today